Say hi, Copper. We gonna work on a bike? Oh, maybe. Okay, Copper. Well, welcome back. Uh, I got the specialist here today. I'm just gonna be stripping it down and uh, I'll, I'm sure I'll clean the parts off camera and uh, hopefully next week I'll have a chance to put things back together. I went back to the uh, 1991 Specialized Catalog to find a picture of this bike. Uh, you can see in the picture it had a Sella Italia Turbo Saddle. The saddle on this bike has been replaced, but other than that it appears to be all original. Um, in 1991, just 10 years after the first stump jumper, it had grown to seven different variations. Uh, they were this one here, just the plain old stump jumper, uh, Cromali Steel DX group set. There was also the stump jumper comp. That one was gray, uh, also in Cromali Steel, but was upgraded to an XT group set. Then there was the stump jumper team. Uh, it was black, also Cromali and had a Suntour XC Pro group, st group set. Um, then there was the Epic. That one was also black, but it was carbon fiber. Um, still XT group set. This is the one that uh, Ned over and raced. Then there was the Stump Jumper Epic Ultimate, uh, also black carbon fiber, but it had a Suntour XC Pro group set. Then there was the Stump Jumper M2. It was purple. Uh, using M2 aluminum and had a DX group set. And then there was the Stump Jumper M2 Team. That one was silver, also M2 aluminum, but had a Suntour XC Pro group set. Uh, the story of Specialized starts in the early mid 70s. There was a guy named Mike Sinyard from California. Um, he wanted to take a cycling trip across Europe. Yeah, he had an old Volkswagen bus that he sold for $1,500 to pay for the trip. And while he was in Italy, he was able to purchase some higher-end uh, cycling components that were difficult to find in the U.S. He spent about $1,000 on parts and brought them back to California with him at the end of his trip. Uh, when he got home, he no longer had a VW bus to drive around. So he rode his bike from shop to shop and convinced owners to buy his parts. And that's how the Specialized Bicycle Components Company was founded in 1974. From there, Mike decided that he needed something else to sell. He decided that road bike tires would be his next investment and found a manufacturer in Asia that would produce his tires. This would be the first product sold with the Specialized name. By 1979, he was ready to build his own bike. He found a frame builder in Japan and sent them a couple of designs that he came up with for a touring bike and a road bike. The touring bike was the Sequoia and the Alas was the road bike. They wouldn't be ready to sell in a bike shop until 1981. Um, with all of that going on, he was still really interested in what a bunch of hippies were doing with bikes nearby. He knew that Gary, Gary Fisher and Joe Breeze and the rest of the crew were racing clunkers down fire roads in the nearby hills. He also knew that Tom Ritchie had made a bunch of frames for Gary Fisher to sell. It was some weird creation that they called a mountain bike. He heard they sold out and Tom Ritchie had started building his own version of a mountain bike. Mike decided to buy a Ritchie bike. He and a friend named Tom Neenan figured that they could build a better bike for less money. They quickly came up with their own design and sent, uh, sent it to their frame builder in Japan and ordered an initial run for 250 frames, followed by an, another order uh, for 500 frames. Um, as the first bikes started to sell, according to Neenan, uh, the stump jumper wasn't really based on a Ritchie frame. Uh, they based it more on a bike called the Lighthouse Cycles uh, Chaparral. Uh, mountain bike components didn't really exist back then. They built up the bikes with a combination of BMX and touring parts, uh, but the stump jumper was born, and now 40 years later, bikes are still being sold with the stump jumper name on it.
this is clearly what happens when uh, parts have been mated together for 30 years. Uh, this, this did take a bit of force to get apart. That's uh, white vinegar in the bowl. I soaked parts overnight and just used white vinegar to clean them. It tends to get all the rust off without uh, causing any damage to the metal. This is where I put the thumb shifters on the wrong sides because I'm not paying attention because I'm worried more about getting the camera angle right, but uh, it all gets magically fixed. I didn't show it on the first half of the video when I was disassembling the bike. I was able to get the entire bottom bracket apart except for the cup on the drive side. Uh, that's why you don't see me putting that cup back in here. It never came out. It was completely fused on there. I took a blowtorch to it. I soaked it. I did everything and it was just not going to budge. Uh, so I left it. I cleaned the inside of it. Uh, with it installed in the bike and, and put everything together, tighten the rest of it down and it works great.
we'll go ahead and do the customary crank spin. Um, and uh, for some of you other YouTube creators out there, it works best if you have both cranks on when you do it. You guys know who you are.
And just like magic, those thumb shifters are the right way around. On the advice of a really important YouTube influencer, I decided to uh, put a height ride on this bike. Uh, unfortunately for him, it's hard to get sponsors to sponsor your videos when the only things you influence people to buy are obsolete parts from the late 80s and early 90s, but I do love this height ride, Oliver, so thanks for the advice. I decided to keep this one looking original uh, the way a 30 year old bike should look. I don't think there's anything wrong with stripping down a bike and repainting it. I know that's a popular thing to do at the moment. Um, I've certainly done my fair share of that. But I do think at some point in the future uh, people who restore vintage bikes uh, will want to do more like this. Uh, kind of how things went in the watch industry where you don't really want to polish an old watch anymore you want it to show its age and I think that's true here so uh, tell me what you think of this one I really love the way it turned out uh, if you haven't already uh, subscribe either way give me a thumbs up and I appreciate you watching we'll see you next time thanks <laughs>